Welcome to Math 1325, Lecture 11.3, Implicit Differentiation. So far, we've been dealing with explicit functions. And this means simply that the function can be easily defined in terms of x alone. That means that um, y is on one side of the equation, and everything else that's happening on the other side of the equation only has x's in it. So this is an explicit function where we get the value of y by doing some calculation with x. So when we take the derivative, we find y prime by taking the derivative with respect to x only, derivative uh, d over dx. So as we know here, the derivative of y equals 1 4 x plus 3 is simply the coefficient in front of the x, or 1 4. Some equations are not explicitly defined very easily. That is, again, that we have all y's on one side and x's on the other. For example, the equation x cubed plus y cubed equals 6xy would be very difficult to solve for y. We know that y, but we know that y is related to x even if it is not explicitly defined. And so as we change the value of x, we can see that that's having an impact on y. So even though it's not explicit, it is still implicit that as x changes, so does y. And that's what we call that y is an implicit function of x. And there's a way to find the derivatives of these functions, and that's called implicit differentiation. So let's look at the original example we had. Here we have a simple equation of a line, and specifically this is in slope-intercept form. We can rewrite this equation in standard form. And this is where the x and the y are on one side and the constant is on the other. Now, we're going to apply some algebraic techniques to this equation in that we're going to apply, we're going to take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. So we're going to take the derivative of the left side and it's going to equal the derivative of the right side. Since we know y is a function of x, we're going to use the chain rule, which means that y is on the outside and then the derivative of y itself. That's the concept. So we're going to take the, when we take the derivative of a difference, um, we take the derivative of the first minus the derivative of the second, which is what we have here. Now notice what we have is that what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of y with respect to y, and then take the derivative of y, sort of, conceptually, with respect to x. And this is what we're actually looking for, the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay. If you look at this, you can see that, sort of, if you thought of those notations, d over dy, and dy over dx, they're kind of like fractions, and the dy's would cancel out, and we would simply be left with d over dx, which is what we're looking for. 4y. So the derivative of x is simply 1 minus 4. The derivative of y with respect to y, just like with the derivative of x with respect to x, we just think of this as if it was an x, and it's also 1. And then we have this derivative that we're trying to find. We're going to use the notation y prime because it makes it a little bit easier to see. And so if we rewrite this, 1 minus 4 dy dx, this equals Oh, 1 minus, sorry, what we've done here is a couple of things. I don't know why the y prime is gone. Um, these are both the same thing. So if I add 4 dy dx to both sides, I get 1 equals 4 dy dx. If I divide both sides by 4, I get 1 fourth equals dy dx, which is what we're looking for. This was actually saying y prime. So notice that we got the same answer when we had the explicit formula as well as the implicit formula. So let's see how we're going to do this. I have like a little, that seem, may seem a little complicated, but it's actually a really simple process. Whenever you take the derivative of a y expression, it's basically the same as differentiating normally, then tacking a dy dx or y prime. I suggest you use y prime. It's a little bit easier to see notation-wide on at the end. So, for example, when we take the derivative with respect to x of 2x cubed, this simply equals 6x squared. If we did the same thing, if we wanted to take the derivative with respect to x of a y 
function. We would first take the derivative with respect to y, which is the same thing, 6y squared, times dy dx, or 6y squared y prime. So again, we take the derivative with respect to the y, and then simply add on y prime. When we have an equation with multiple of these, then we'll solve it algebraically for y prime, as we saw in the last example. So let's do a couple examples and see how these work. First, we're trying to find the um, derivative y prime for y squared equals x. So the we take the derivative of both sides, which the derivative of the left side is going to be the derivative of y, which is 2y, and then we add on the y prime. The derivative of x is simply 1. When we simplify this, again, we're solving for y prime, so we're going to divide both sides by 2y, and we get the final answer. Notice that we're looking for the slope of the tangent to the graph. Well, that's what a derivative is, right? It's the slope of the tangent. This formula gives us the slope of the tangent at any point. We want the slope of the tangent at two specific points. One is 4, 2, and the other is 4, negative 2. Notice our slope formula only uses the y term, so we only need to use the y values. So for the slope at 4, 2, it's 1 over 2 times 2, or positive 1 fourth. For the slope at 4, negative 2, notice we use negative 2. This is actually 2 times negative 2. It's not 2x minus 2. It's a little bit confusing. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, so we get negative 1 fourth. If you look at the diagram, what we have is a sideways parabola, and we can see why the slope is negative at 4, negative 2, and positive at 4, 2. Let's try another problem with a little bit more complicated function. Let's find the slope of the tangent to the graph at x squared plus y squared minus 9 equals 0 at, the, at a specific point. Sorry about that. Knocked my microphone over. At the square root of 5, 2. So again, we're going to take the derivative of each piece. The derivative of x squared is simply 2x. Take the derivative of both sides. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of y squared is 2y, y prime. The derivative of negative 9 is 0. The derivative of 0 is also 0, because remember, the derivatives of constants are zeros. Again, we solve this for y prime. We first subtract 2x from both sides, and then divide by 2y. 2x over 2y, or negative 2x over 2y is negative x over y. Okay. Again, all we're doing from here to here is solving for y prime. First, subtract 2x from both sides, and then divide by 2y. But again, we're looking for the answer at a specific value, which is at the square root of 5, comma 2, or x equals the square root of 5 and y equals 2. We simply plug those values in, and we get our answer. So our, our slope at this point is negative square root of 5 over 2. This next one's a little bit more involved, but we've done many of these problems where we've had to write the equation of a tangent line. Specifically, we have a, a little bit more involved formula, and we also have a product rule in the middle now, too. So pay attention to this as well. So the derivative, uh, we're going to take the derivative of both sides, which is the derivative of x cubed plus xy plus 4 equals the derivative of 0. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Now here we have a product rule. So remember the product rule is the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Well, the derivative of x is 1 times the other part, y, plus the derivative of y is also 1, but it's 1y prime, remember, because we add the y prime times the other piece, which is x, plus 0 for, for and the derivative of 0 is also 0. So here, when we simplify this for y prime, we get negative 3x squared minus y over x. They specifically want us to write the equation of the tangent line. So we, have a, we need a linear equation, y equals mx plus b. So first we need to find the slope at this point. The x value is 2, the y value is negative 6, so we plug those in. Whoops, looks like we got this backward. The slope first is plugging in 2, negative 6, and we get negative 3. In the equation, this is another, this is the equation of a line and point slope, which is y minus y1 equals the slope, or m, times x minus x1. So y minus the y value 
y minus negative 6 equals the slope, negative 3, times x minus the x value, which is 2, and we simplify this, and we get y equals negative 3x. You should be able to do this by now. We've done quite a, a large number of those. Let's try one more problem, and this one's a little bit more complicated again. So it's asking when do we have a, when does, um, at what point does um, this function have a horizontal tangent? Well, remember a horizontal tangent or a horizontal line has a slope of zero. So in this first question, we're looking for when the slope is zero or when the derivative equals zero. The second one says, when do we have a vertical tangent? A vertical line has no slope. It's undefined. So we're looking for when the derivative is undefined. So let's solve this problem. We take the derivative of both sides, x squared plus 4y squared minus 2x plus 4y minus 2 equals the derivative of 0. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 4y squared is 8y y prime. Don't forget the y prime. The derivative of negative 2x is simply negative 2. And the derivative of 4y is 4y prime. Again, don't forget the y prime. This is 0. This is 0. And so we have our equation here. To solve this, let's get everything that doesn't have a y prime on the other side. So we add 2 and we subtract 2x. Notice now we have two terms with y prime in them. We can factor that out. So we get 2y prime equals 4y plus 2. We've also factored out a 2 because we saw that there's a 2 on both sides. So now I can divide both sides by 2, which cancels out the 2's. And I can then divide both sides by the other term, 4y plus 2, and I get my derivative. Notice that my derivative, or my equation for a slope, is equal to a rational expression. When will a fraction be equal to 0? Well, a fraction will be equal to 0 when the numerator is 0. So all I have to do here is set my numerator equal to 0 and solve. 1 minus x equals 0. And that gives me x equals 1. If I plug this back into the original equation, not my derivative, my original equation, and then solve for y, notice I get a quadratic equation, which I can then factor, or I could use the quadratic formula, and I get two y values, y equals 1 half, or y equals negative 3 halves. So I actually have two points where I have horizontal tangent lines. When I'm trying to find where the derivative is undefined, notice in a fraction, when do I have an undefined value? When the denominator is equal to 0. So I set the denominator equal to 0 and solve that, and I get y equals negative 1 half. When I plug in this y value back into my original equation, and then solve for x, notice I get another quadratic equation, which I factor, and then I get two values of x, x equals 3, and x equals negative 1. So I have two points here. Sorry about the, the bar going over top of those. If you want to see what this diagram looks like, it's actually an ellipse, or an oval, and you can see I have two horizontal tangents here, and two vertical tangents there. Hopefully this has helped you uh, understand implicit differentiation. Do not forget to do your homework. And then also remember, in your syllabus next to each day's lecture is a set of sample problems that are recommended. I highly recommend you try those problems that are in the electronic text on WebAssign.